Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about compression and how it can be deployed in a vocal mixing context. I had a pretty difficult time understanding this concept when I first started mixing, so my goal today is to help demystify it for you. When compression is applied to an audio signal, the loud parts of the audio signal are reduced and the quiet parts are also amplified. This means you're taking the dynamic range of your audio signal and kind of squashing it. It's kind of like kneading dough when you think about it, right? The more compression that's applied, the more you work the dough with your hands, right? And the more you work the dough with your hands, the more uniform and indistinguishable the dough's ingredients become from one another, right? Now you can break a dry vocals ingredients down into four main parts. You have your vowels, consonants, breaths, and you have your background noise. The compressor is going to offer you a degree of dynamic consistency to your vocal whenever you're working on your projects. So how much should you work your dough then? It's going to depend on what you're cooking. Biscuit dough requires less kneading, right? But when you make pizza, you want to knead it to a certain degree. That way the dough can be nice and strong and stretchy. That way you can build it into its iconic shape. Now when you're dealing with compressors, they have four main components to them. They have the ratio, threshold, attack, and release. Your attack and release settings are going to be really crucial in determining the tonality that you get from your vocal when using the compressor. If you use a fast attack, your vocal is going to sound really rich and thick compared to how it would sound without it. But if you use too much compression, it's going to squash all those transient consonants which is going to ruin the presence of your vocal. So you have to be careful how much of these things you're using. If you have a fast release, it's going to make your vocal sound really aggressive. You might not want that on the particular project you're working on, or maybe you do. Let's dive into this project here so I can show you where I actually used it in context of a mix. All right, we got our project pulled up here. We're going to be working out of Nectar Pro again. In my previous video, I showed you guys how I did the subtractive EQ for this song. Now we're going to show you how to do the compression that follows that. Just for a frame of reference, here's how this vocal sounds without any compression on it. The presence is pretty good, but there's a couple syllables where it just kind of feels like the vocal's not really speaking as well. Let's do the compression from scratch. Click here, add your compressor and drag it towards the front of your chain, but put it after your subtractive EQ. The first thing I like to do is bring down the threshold and decide how much of the vocal signal we're going to be applying compression to. Ooh, it's a little bit, a little bit more buttery. But I can already hear that we added the extra presence that we needed here. Bring up this release and attack just a hair. Let's bring up the makeup game. Now let's bring down the dry wet a little bit. Get some of that dry vocal back in here. This will help maintain the integrity of our vocal. Here's how it sounds without the compressor. And then with it. So besides the obvious increase in volume, the vocal has a lot more presence and consistency from syllable to syllable. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is how I use a compressor in the context of helping clean up my dry vocal tracks. I use it at other points in my mixing process, but I'll probably save that for a future video. I hope I was able to show you guys something new today. Thanks again for watching.